my invisible friends. Hello and welcome back to another video of our series on electrical engineering. This one is the fourth of a sub-series dedicated to the diode. Small signal model of the diode and the load line. Large signal models. You see, in our previous two videos we have seen ways of representing the real diode. All of them are suitable for the analysis of large signals. The exact model, the constant voltage model, and the piecewise linear model, also known as the RV model. All of them are large signal models for the diode. And I need to clarify what I mean by large signal. Look, in that characteristic of the diode, the exponential one, let's say that the point of operation for a given circuit is this red dot there. That tells us what is the current in the diode and the voltage in the diode. When the input signal makes the operating point of the diode travel back and forth between the forward and the reverse biased zones, we call the signal a large signal. And we represent the diode as we learned in the previous video when a small oscillating signal is superimposed so that the operating point stays within a small neighborhood of the exponential, we deem that a small signal. Observe that to the small signal the curvature of the exponential is not evident. All the small signal sees is a straight line, a slanted line, the tangent to the exponential at the center of that neighborhood. All it sees is a resistance, the inverse of the slope of that tangent, as we shall demonstrate in what follows. Let's consider this scenario. The diode, the real diode, is connected to a linear circuit that is enclosed by that gray box. That gray box uh, circuit, being linear and all, can be represented, of course, with a Thevenin equivalent like this. Now let's show that circuit and find what is the voltage and what is the current in that diode. In solving that, we remember that the current in the diode is producing an ohm's voltage drop in the resistor, RTHID. We can write a KVL equation around that loop and solve for the current in the diode, VTH minus VD over RTH. Or we can simplify that further and realize that that is the equation of a line on a plane I versus VD. What line? A line with a negative slope, like so. A line that when VD is zero, has a value of VTH over RTH. And when ID is zero, the value of the voltage is just V7 down here. That is called the load line of the circuit. And it is a characteristic of the linear circuit that is feeding the diode. Wherever ID and VD are, they have to be on the load line to satisfy that linear circuit. But the diode also has some requirements. It specifies that whatever ID and VD are, they must be on this exponential, this one. To satisfy both equations, we have to solve this system of two simultaneous equations, or graphically, we find that intersection and say at that point that we call the quiescent point of the circuit, we find what is the actual voltage in the diode and what is the actual current in the diode. We call those the quiescent voltage and the quiescent current of the diode. Please observe what we have said. The load line is rooted at VTH on the horizontal axis, this voltage, and at VTH over RTH on the vertical axis. If we were to superimpose a tiny AC voltage, tiny, it has to be much smaller than VTH, so the diode doesn't turn off. It's a small signal. That small signal will move the load line 
to the left and to the right by that amount so instead of vth we have vth plus vac or vth minus vac sometimes the load line is to the right vth plus vac and sometimes it's to the left vth minus vac so that oscillation makes the point of operation of the diode travel that small neighborhood around the quiescent point we care for the relationship between changes of voltage in the diode versus changes of current in the diode we zoom in at the quiescent point for the small signal we notice that small changes of voltage in the diode produce small changes of current in the diode the relationship between those changes is given by the slope of the tangent to the exponential at the quiescent point at the q point delta i divided by delta v like this and this approximated value can be obtained by the derivative of the diode current with respect to the diode voltage at the quiescent point given that we have Shockley's formula we differentiate the current to find the slope of the tangent please observe that the numerator of the slope is just iq the quiescent current of the diode let's make a change of notation lowercase v lowercase d will be the change of voltage in the diodes produced by the small signal and lowercase i lowercase d is now delta id the change in current in the diode produced by the small signal so the slope m is id over vd its inverse has ohms units is vd over id and we call that rd the dynamic resistance of the diode at the quiescent point nvt divided by the quiescent current of the diode to the small signal the diode does not look like a diode it looks just as a resistor the small resistance rd is this one nvt over iq so that's the plan in this example a large dc signal vdc is superimposed with the small ac signal and together they power a diode circuit let's find what is the voltage in the diode and the current in the diode as superposition of the effect of those two sources first i solve the circuit in dc the ac source becomes a short circuit and uh, we solve that circuit for iq the quiescent current of the diode with that quiescent current we find rd nvt over iq which is the way the diode looks in the ac circuit for the ac source we kill the dc source and we represent the diode not as a diode but as the resistor rd we find lowercase i lowercase d from the circuit in ac and we have iq we add them together and that is the actual current in the diode and we do something similar with voltages and find the actual voltage in the diode tutorial time on the hp prime uh, let's say that for this diode in the figure we know the reverse saturation current it is one nano amp the fabrication coefficient is o1 the thermal voltage is 25 millivolts and what are they asking us they are asking us to find the quiescent point to find iq and with iq well you know what i will be doing with iq reference node not one branch currents vdq and idq the usual the diodes exact model if the uh, uh, equation that i need to solve that includes the current in the circuit and the current in the diode solve and find that the voltage in the diode is 0 0.4593 at this point i will not go into the details of that solution you can freeze the video and read carefully what i've done there that voltage in the diode is the quiescent voltage of the diode with that one and is the exponential model of the diode we can find what is the quiescent current in a diode 95.4 milliampere use the formula 
that we have seen before. And with that quiescent current in the diode, we can find the resistance RD. You remember that. It, let's do that again for the circuit now. That has an AC component, small signal of only, it should say there, 30 millivolts peaks to peak. And that is the AC voltage source, a small signal compared to 10 volts, which is a DC large signal. That group is driving a diode given by the reverse saturation current, 3 microamps, with a fabrication coefficient to a thermal voltage of 25 millivolts. The resistor value is 100 ohm. What is the AC current in the diode? You know what I'm going to do. Find what is the quiescent point. To find mostly the quiescent current. With the quiescent current, we find the dynamic resistance of the diode. And then we show the circuit in AC, because that is all this question is asking us to find. There. First thing, find the quiescent point from that circuit. Right. The usual, the diode the equation, the gauge hill for the diode, and we solve for VQ, and with VQ we find what is IQ. That is IQ, the quiescent current in the diode. And then with that one, we compute the dynamic resistance, 0.5 ohms, and we go to the AC model of the circuit, only the AC source. This is superposition. We have killed the DC source. All we have is this voltage, 30 millivolts, peak to peak, the resistor, 100 ohms, and the diode for that small signal sees only as RD, this 0 0.527 milli. Retake. 527 milliohms. And uh, there you go. The AC voltage in the diode, I compute using a voltage divider of 30 volts between 100 and RD. And that is that voltage. The conclusion is that a variation of the input voltage of 30 millivolts peak to peak gets toned down in the diode to a variation of merely 0 0.16 millivolts. Very, very little change. This is an idea that we will exploit in the Zener diode in the future video, a way of maintaining a voltage constant. Limitation of the diodes, of course. Every physical device has some limitations. Let's see what other ones for the diode, the ratings maximum current when it's conducting we need to check that from the data sheet what is the maximum reverse voltage that we can apply to the diode what is the maximum power you can dissipate what is the maximum temperature we can operate at where do we get those from you know from the spec sheet from the data sheet and where we find the data sheet the internet for instance uh, from this place that is a good site to find that in that data sheet, among other things, we will find also this curve, which is the exponential curve on the semi-logarithmic paper. That's why it looks different. But it's, I promise you, it is the exponential curve. And that is almost all that I have to say about the rectifying diode. So, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to meet with you all in the next video.